what is WebAssembly? So you started with a lower level language like C or C, um, C or C++, and you write code in that, and you compile that to WASM or WebAssembly. Uh, it defines an abstract virtual machine that acts as a compiler target. So um, think in, I mean, for those of you that have done Unity, when you're building, you can tell it to export as WebGL or export as a Mac app. Well, you can export it as WebAssembly. Um, and then I actually saw some really, really neat uh, games that were exported into WebAssembly. And you had these beautiful interfaces, game, like interactive games on the web running in normal, normal browsers, and they looked like they were desktop quality. Um, it, WebAssembly is not directly what your CPU, CPU understands, but it's leaps and bounds closer. So if you're familiar with where JavaScript lands in the stack of uh, languages, um, like language uh, abstractions from the zeros and ones that your computer is actually processing. JavaScript's at the top, right? That's why it's you know loosely typed. They, they can do things like that. Um, but the closer you get to the CPU, the more strictly typed and more uh, defined rules you have to have. Um, and so when you're writing your code in C and C++ and having that uh, get compiled into WebAssembly, you are writing code that is going to run and execute on the web that is like three layers away from the CPU, which is really cool. And so what that does is it gives you uh, 20 times, they were saying, um, the speed performance. So that's how they're able to run really, really impressive games because it's basically running a native application at that point. Um, all the major browsers have uh, confirmed that they will support this. Currently, only the latest version of Chrome and the latest version of Firefox uh, run it on their own. Uh, but all, all browsers have, all major browsers have gone on board. Um, like I mentioned, there's a 20 times uh, speed increase. Um, and, this, and this gets really important as we move forward and everybody's got mobile devices uh, and you've got big apps that need to run on a small, weak processor. Uh, taking away those abstraction layers is going to be really important. Um, let's see, browsers can implement WASM inside existing JavaScript engines, making the cost of adaptation nearly equal to implementing a new JavaScript feature. And this is, this is due to the uh, part that your WebAssembly code is just exported as a JavaScript module that you would just use, just like you would NPM or uh, import Lodash from Lodash, right? You'd import your module from your module, and you just be able to use it just like anything else, um, which is really neat because then you can just bring that in as you as you as you need to. Uh, so, what are the things you can use it for? Like I mentioned, you've got gaming, uh, image and video editing. So think like Photoshop, something super complex like that, running in the web, running at native speeds. Um, music streaming services, you know, like Spotify and Pandora, how they're they, they can glitch out on you or crash. Um, well, those kind of, that's, the reason that's happening is because the math and things that are going on is so heavy that it is going to bog down the UI. But when you are doing the math, like the really heavy math and whatnot that's involved with music editing, video editing, uh, on the native layer, your speed is going to be a normal desktop kind of speed. Um, you can also think this would help with like VPNs where you're tunneling traffic or data traffic, a remote desktop, really anything complex. Uh, what would you not use it for? Well, building, you know, building user interfaces. Keep that in JavaScript because WebAssembly is not going to be your answer there because that stuff is easy to do. It's not super complex. But building like a 3D uh, rotating image or a rotating ship, you know, like you, you'd be able to do that in WebAssembly because uh, that's a complex thing. And you would just import that as a module and then you could feed your UI from the WebAssembly web code. Um, so it's efficient and fast. It's designed to be loaded in binary format, so zeros and ones. Like I said earlier, it, it compiles right down to zeros and ones uh, based off the instructions. Um, and it's able to take advantage of hardware. Uh, it's open and debuggable. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like. You've got your C++ factorial function here. Uh, you can see that this is a function that takes an int and returns an int. Um, on the far right side, this is the WebAssembly code. So if you've ever looked at assembly, 
you've got different instructions where you have to manually tell the processor to store different variables and different registries on board and have it execute whatever task you need it to do. Uh, well, when you're converting, so basically you write your code in C++, convert it to WebAssembly, and that on the right hand, that text column directly converts to binary. So you can see that in the middle. So that's what your processor is running, those instructions there. Um, <clears throat> so that's just proving to you what it, what it looks like. It's safe, it's memory safe and sandbox execution environment, just like you already have in JavaScript. So you get all of the security benefits that the browser ecosystem already affords um, because you're running it right alongside your JavaScript. Um, so it is part of the open web platform. It's designed to maintain versionless, featureless, or sorry, feature tested and backwards compatible nature of the web. And that's coming from webassembly.org, which is the de facto resource on this topic. Um, uh, WebAssembly modules can call in and out of JavaScript context. Uh, and they have the same access to all the web APIs that JavaScript does. It'll be able to run on non-web embeddings as well. So um, getting started, um, this is the paper doc, which I'll include in the um, Chug Talk uh, link. But if you're interested in getting started, I would recommend you watch this video here. Um, it's probably just a better version of my talk here, which is helpful. Um, the WebAssembly Explorer uh, is a GitHub project that lets you write C++ or C code and watch it transpile to WebAssembly live in the editor or live in the website, which um, we'll do next. Uh, that WebAssembly.org has a getting started developer's guide, uh, which isn't too long and allows you to run their production level WebAssembly uh, compiler. So if you were actually interested in getting started with WebAssembly like today on a production app, uh, you'd want to follow that guide there. And um, I wouldn't really recommend it right now because it's they're still making some core changes. Um, but if you want to get started, that's that's a good one. And then the last one is another quick start from Mozilla. Uh, Mozilla seems to be one of the bigger proponents behind WebAssembly, so they've made sure to make all of their documentation and videos easily accessible. Um, and so this is the this is the link here um, that I was just mentioning where you can install the production ready WebAssembly tool. So let's go ahead and play. Uh, we're going to um, so we're going to head to WebAssembly Explorer. We're going to, I'm basically I'm going to show you how you how easy it is to integrate WebAssembly into a JavaScript app. Um, so we're going to head here, and um, this is that explorer I was mentioning. Um, so over here we can do int foo takes an int sorry uh, int x and returns, so we're just going to take the cubed value of x and return it back. Easy enough. Um, and so I'm going to change this C++ to C99 um, because <clears throat> the way it exports, if you export it as C++11, it prefixes the value or the name of the function with something random, which is not helpful when you're trying to reference it dynamically in JavaScript. I think that's just a bug for now, uh, but C99 will do it. Do you have a reason? Property overloading. But why, like why would? Because JavaScript doesn't support property overloading, but CS, C++ 11 does. You can have the same function with different signature, argument signatures. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if you have the same function with different argument signatures in JavaScript, you're just rewriting the same function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, so right here, we've got a function. You can see what it looks like in the human readable version of WebAssembly. Uh, and then you can see what it looks like when it's actually compiled into WebAssembly. So the human readable version of WebAssembly right here is uh, Firefox is basically giving you a editable version of your WebAssembly code so that you can uh, so if you're running an app and you're getting a, a bug in your, in your WebAssembly code, 
you can more easily understand this human readable version of it because you might not have access to the C++ version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you definitely don't want to be trying to debug the one on the right because <laughs> that's essentially the no yeah. point. Um, so we're going to go ahead and download it. And uh, I actually already had it downloaded and uh, I dragged it into this project here, which I'll run over the code really quickly. Um, so if you want to see this working, you need to have it running on a server. You can't just open up the index.html file um, for cross-origin requests. Uh, that will be a problem for you. So as you can see in my index.html, I'm including app.js, and I've got uh, two buttons. One button is load web assembly. One button is curry foo. So it's going to run the function foo. Um, and then you've, I've got some some output divs here. And then I'll show you in the code. Um, so right now, the function foo, when it's run, it will just return whatever number you're giving it. Um, and this function is just going to display whatever the result is of foo. Um, and so what we're gonna demonstrate here is the ability to have a function called foo that simply return, that takes an input and returns that input. And then we're going to dynamically load the WebAssembly file, which is, and the result of that is going to overwrite. You can see this is how I get access to that function that I wrote in WebAssembly. Um, there's also in, uh, instance .exports foo. So that's the function name. I'm just going to overwrite the value, the value of the function foo to do whatever, you know, take, take the number and then cube it, right? Easy enough. Um, and so Firefox actually has a really sweet uh, WebAssembly viewer. Um, but Chrome doesn't have this yet. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure refresh here. So as you can see, we haven't loaded the WebAssembly file. Um, and if I change, you guys see that all right? Yeah, uh, if I change this number to five, when I run foo, what should I get? Five. five. Which I do. I get five. That's good. Yay. <laughs> so now I'm going to load, and you'll see there's no WebAssembly file here. I'm going to load the WebAssembly file. So now we've loaded this file, and we can even view this file, and you can see the human readable version of the WebAssembly code. Under the hood, it's, the, it's those instructions, but Firefox is making it easier for us to see. <laughs> um, and so I can get in here and I can set breakpoints. I mean, you could do the whole editing game. Okay. So now, what, what should I see when I cube five? Whatever that number is. Whatever that number, <laughs> that's my answer. So now we're gonna see 125. So you can see that we are, we are running code that we wrote in C++. That was, is it transpiled or compiled to? It's compiled. Compiled into WebAssembly. Importing that WebAssembly code into your JavaScript environment and then running it to get a result. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that concludes my my talk on WebAssembly, and I'm happy to answer it.